These are the masks I'm going to show you how to make today, and they are my absolute favorite because they only have a small dart at the top for your nose and at the bottom for your chin. So it leaves a large open part in the middle for a large pattern or an iron-on transfer. At the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to make a version with a pocket for a filter and how to add a nose wire. I'm going to use this Care Bear fabric from Joann's and show you how to place a particular character right in the middle of your mask. Because with an Olsen mask or this pleated mask, you can see how you can't see the large pattern on the fabric at all. To start, decide what part of the pattern you want to be in the middle of the mask, and then you're going to fold your fabric right at that point. Our fabric is folded and we've positioned our characters where we want them to be after it's cut. Now place the pattern right along the edge of the fabric and imagine what it's going to look like and where that pattern is going to be once you've cut the fabric. Once we cut and unfold the fabric, we'll have one full piece. What makes this so easy is we're going to cut both our outside fabric and our lining fabric at the same time. So fold your lining fabric in half and then line it up with the fabric that you've already folded and make sure that the folded edges and the pattern are completely straight and aligned with each other. And this way, since these are the only two fabrics we're using, it's going to make it really easy. Once again, make sure that your folds are lined up. This is the most important part because that way when we cut out our pattern, then both pieces, once we go to sew them, will line up perfectly. And once you've done that, I like to use these clips. They're really awesome. But if you don't have them, you can use pins and you're going to clip or pin your pattern into place so that it doesn't move while you're cutting. Using a rotary cutter or scissors, cut right along the edge of the fabric, making sure not to cut at the fold line. Once we've cut out and unfolded our fabric, these are the only two pieces we need. That's why it's so easy. So before we get to sewing, I like to iron them flat and then we can start. First, we're going to sew the darts on the outer and on the inner lining. And you see the way we cut it, it's already created the dart for you. So fold it in half and then line them up and make sure they're lined up really well. And then you're going to pin or clip in place the fabric and that'll hold it while you sew. And once you're done with the outer layer, do the same with the lining. To sew the dart, you're going to stitch parallel to the dart edge, back stitching at the beginning and the end straight down. Now if you'd like more of a curve to your dart, you can do the same thing, but before you get to the end, make a slight curve that runs parallel to the folded edge and back Trim the threads and do the same thing for all four darts. You can see here I've sewn all four darts using the curved method that I showed you. And then I trimmed off the excess material because that will help your dart lie a lot flatter. And now we're going to turn them right side out. And you'll see because we placed that character right on the fold, you can see the entire pattern and you don't have any pleats or large seams running down the middle, getting in the way. Next, we're going to place the right sides of the outer fabric and the lining fabric together and line them up to prepare to sew. And the best way to do this is to start with the darts at the top, line them up really well, then place a pin or a clip and follow it all the way around, pinning and clipping in place. <laughs> Once you've sewn all the way around the edge, we're ready to turn it right side out. And you can see why we left that little space there in order to turn it right side out. And I like to leave that space on the edge because once we're done, we're going to fold that end over and you won't even see it. 
Once you've taken it all right side out, use the eraser part of a pencil, or I like a crochet hook, and really get into the corners and push them out. Before I move on to the next step, I like to iron it to set the stitches. Now you want to make sure that you iron it straight through the middle, right where it's flat. You don't want to iron over the darts. Definitely don't or fold it and iron over the darts because that will just make the point a lot more prominent. If you're going to iron the darts, then use a tailor's ham or rolled up towel to really iron the curves of the dart. And that'll make the mask curve really nicely around your face. Once we've ironed our mask, before we move on to making the ear loops, what I like to do is I like to do a top stitch that goes all the way around, about an eighth of an inch away from the edge, making sure to back stitch at the beginning and at the end. And that will not only give it a professional look, but it'll make it hold up with multiple washings. And this is what it looks like after we've done the top stitch. Now you can see here, I've used a dark color thread so it would show up in the video and you can see it, but I probably would have chosen white or some other corresponding color. Our final step is to make the channels for the ear loop. And the way we do that is we're gonna fold up about a half to three quarters of an inch of fabric on the ends. Now you can double fold this to give it a little bit more of a cleaner look, but I prefer to just fold it once it makes it easier for the needle to go through. Then pin it in place and move on to the next side. In order to get them even, so that both sides are folded evenly, what I'll do is I'll fold it in half and then use the first fold as a guide for the second one. And you can see how doing it this way, you don't even have to worry about measuring or marking to make sure that they're even. Now once you've pinned both parts in place, we're going to take it to the sewing machine and do a zigzag stitch along the inner edge. And I like to use about a width of a 2.0. My absolute favorite material to use for ear loops is kids' tights because they're comfortable, easy, and you can make a lot of loops out of just one tight. And the way I start is first I'll cut off the toe. Then I'm going to cut about one and a half to two inches, and I cut this one a little short, um, but you want it to be thick. Then cut the ends, or just run your scissors through the loops and cut it, and that'll give you a nice long piece. Now when you stretch the tights, this is what I like the best about them, when you stretch them, the ends will roll in on each other so you don't even have to finish them. And they're really comfortable. And as you see, these are a little thin. So the thinner they are, the more they'll dig into the back of your ear. That's why I like having them thicker. Now they're ready to thread through the channel, tie them off real tight, and you're done. <laughs> To make the mask with a filter pocket, we're going to use the exact same pattern, but just add the cheek piece. Using the same method and pattern as before, cut out the outer fabric and the lining fabric. But this time, with the lining fabric, you're also going to cut out two separate cheek pieces. To turn our lining piece into a pocket, measure two inches from each side and make a mark.
Hold the edge up to the mark we just made and then fold it over again so the fold is about a half an inch wide. Pin it and do the same to the other side. You can see once I place that there how it's starting to look like a pocket. Now we need to finish the cheek pieces and I'm going to place it over and then I'm going to fold in the raw edge, double fold it, but don't fold it too much because you want there to be some overlap. Next, do a zigzag or straight stitch, making sure to backstitch at the beginning and the end to keep the folds in place. And just like before, sew all the way around with a straight stitch quarter inch seam. But this time you don't need to leave the room at the end because we're just going to turn it inside out using the pocket. To add a nose wire to any of these masks, before you turn them right side out, get a pipe cleaner. Make sure that you fold in the ends, bend it and find the middle, then place the middle right at the nose dart. Clip that in place and then use a wide zigzag stitch all running down the pipe cleaner. Then when you turn it right side out, you'll have a nose wire. And here's the finished mask and you can see how once you've made a few you could customize it by bringing in the cheek a little more or making the darts a little longer or shorter to fit your face. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions leave them in the comment section below. Stay safe. Bye!